hello everyone and in today's video I'm going to do a little project overview for this game jam I made where I've got this plant growing with the use of a spline that constructs itself. I'm going to go over how exactly I've done that because from looking online can't I couldn't find a concrete answer that kind of solved this. So going into our blueprint the first thing is our make spline event and our spline if you've followed a spline tutorial before is usually made in the construction script here as you can see through the code but if we're making it at runtime it would be useless so it needs to be done in the event graph exactly the same how you would usually do it and I have it on a loop. The or because mine at least or always needs to be constructed itself. Granted, if it's any other usage, you may not need to be doing this. But while it's being constructed, it needs to be on a loop. And then just the usual blind mesh component. And as we saw, my spline was very blocky. And that's just because the condition of the game jam that I took part in had to use assets from the Kenny site. And these are all low poly assets, meaning that our spline didn't look too great as a result. As we know we need many subdivisions when we're working with splines. So we make our spline mesh component, we set our material. Was all the usual stuff and then we do our start and end but here is where we actually get it working so on our view and play we've got enter a gate I actually think now might be unnecessary we do our make supply which is this we create a dynamic material which is for the plants that grow from the actual stem of the plant. I only did this game's jam in 48 hours, so at the time I couldn't find a way to make the spline with a dynamic material, so I wasn't able to assign it. But then yet here what we're doing is press out some necessary as well. It must have been used for something, but yeah. I think I was using this for something at one point, but and then we're adding a spline point, and the location is the location of the highest spline point or yeah the spline point at the end so we get in that location to add a new spline point getting that to set a starting location for a timeline that we're going to use and our timeline is just a linear one second timeline And then we're going with our transform index, which if you see when our timeline finishes, add in our timeline index past one, unless it gets to a maximum and then we're looping around. And what our index, our transform index is doing is getting one of these addition vectors, which we're adding to our starting point. And what these are doing is just giving the coordinates for our spline to kind of do that snake pattern that stems created. So zero to one are just to start off at the start of the game and then two to eight is our loop, which is why it will go back to two if it's at the end. Yeah. 
But yeah, then we're doing that in a loop from our starting point to our starting point added with our transform on a one second alpha. And I think this is where people get the issue. It's because I had to do this through continuous testing. I'm not sure as to why minus one gets us to the spline point we need. But I found that anything other than minus one, the spline will not move at all. So when we're setting our location for the addition to our spline, we need to do one minus the maximum. And that gets us to the spline point that we need to affect the location. And then these things that just drag off it, that's just the setting up the dynamic material. Oh, and also here, I found that because mine's continuous the, and it's running at runtime, I've got it so that once we have more than 20 spline points, it will take away the first five. Just so, because it gets to a point that we get so many spline points that are adding continuously, that it gets a little bit laggy. So I've had to do a fix to make it a little bit more efficient. I, I imagine that if we weren't doing something that was continuous, this wouldn't be necessary. And then, like we know before, this is just our channel. And this event down here is just this, which is where we're spawning assets that grow from our stem and all that we're doing here is that depending on the transform that it's on, it will spawn meshes. And um, we're also making sure that plants don't grow at the same time, etc. But yeah, all that doesn't really account for. Fine. But yeah, it's a very short video, but this is a quick method that I found of making splines at runtime. Hopefully it works for other types of mechanics. I know this worked specifically for mine, but I imagine with a few alterations, you, you're, you're sure to be able to make it work for you. So I'll just try and, just for screenshot purposes, hover over. Right, and there we have it. Alright, so with that, thanks for watching.